Red Bull's dominance in Formula One seemingly came to an abrupt end at the Monaco Grand Prix, failing to grace the podium as it battled issues with bump and curb compliance. Drivers Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez complained of an uncontrollable car all weekend and ultimately failed to reach the podium. In recent races, Ferrari and McLaren have been getting closer and closer, with a smaller points difference between Red Bull and Ferrari than in the 2022 season. In 2023, Red Bull finished with 805 points, 451 more than second place Mercedes. This backed up their dominance from the 2022 season and made people realize that Red Bull is here to stay on top. Many fans hoped through pre-season testing that the gap would close and Formula One would have closer, more competitive races. Hope was lost when videos emerged of the RB20 testing at Silverstone. This was then established in the Bahrain Grand Prix, in which Verstappen and Perez achieved the 1-2, with Verstappen winning with a 22-second gap. This continued in Saudi Arabia and looked most of the way through Australia like another easy win was in grasp. However, a freak brake problem meant Verstappen had to retire on the first lap. Red Bull were back on form in Japan and China, with rivals such as McLaren edging closer, but they still had an easy lead. But in Miami, the win didn't come and the team did not look comfortable all weekend. Then, Inimola Verstappen had to fight for the win, nearly giving it to Lando Norris for the second week in a row. Last weekend's Monaco Grand Prix, a race traditionally known for its unpredictability and the importance of qualifying, revealed potential cracks in Red Bull's once impregnable armor. Throughout the weekend, Verstappen struggled for pace and had to contend with a particularly inconsistent RB20. His qualifying performance left him in a disappointing sixth place, a position he maintained throughout the race, marking his worst result since the 2022 Sao Paulo Grand Prix. The situation was even worse for Perez, who qualified 18th and crashed on the opening lap after a collision with Magnussen. These setbacks have had a significant impact on Verstappen's lead in the championship, which has now been reduced to a precarious 31 points. It's like I'm running without suspension, so it's jumping around a lot, not absorbing any curb strikes or bumps or camber changes. A rueful Verstappen noted after qualifying in Monaco, the day before, he'd encountered headaches from jumping around like a kangaroo on the bumps and curbs. He says the fundamental problem that's thwarted Red Bull's Monaco weekend is one that has been masked by its car advantage since 2022. It comes one week after an Imola race, where Verstappen almost lost victory to Norris. But Red Bull is not struggling with a new issue according to Verstappen. Instead, it's one that dates back to the start of this era of ground effect cars, a problem only masked until now by Red Bull's dominance. Verstappen labeled it a fundamental problem that can't be fixed in weeks. But can it be fixed during this season? Well, first of all, we need to understand what it is and we don't. We'll work hard to try to find the problem and try to get rid of it. But I don't know if we can do that this year or we'll have to wait for next year. If we knew we would have of course fixed it, clearly we don't. Monaco marks the third successive tricky weekend for Red Bull, but Verstappen said each was a result of different problems. Probably in Miami, we didn't get the balance correct, and also maybe the tires. In Imola, we managed to turn it around quite well, but because of all the problems, we were probably not on top of the tires, especially the hard tire. Overall, the performance was okay, but I knew this was going to be one of our most difficult weekends with everyone catching up as well. I'm just aware we are not perfect, we need to work. We need to understand our limitations more and try to work on that. And what of the title race? I don't even think about that. The title race is so long, anything can happen. One bad race won't alter the title. I know that to win a title, you need to be consistent, and that's what we have to try to be. Red Bull advisor Helmut Marko cited several reasons for the decline in the Austrian team's dominance. We are now in our third year with the current regulations, and other teams have started to copy us. Some are doing better, as you see now with McLaren. Ferrari has also continuously developed. McLaren is becoming increasingly dangerous for Red Bull. According to Marko, McLaren came up with better updates in Monaco. He argues that McLaren is now reaping the benefits of the arrival of chief designer Rob Marshall, who started at McLaren last January after 17 years at Red Bull. According to Marco, there is also a big difference between the simulator and reality. Our drivers came to Monte Carlo excited and told us the car was great over the curbs. But as soon as they were actually in the car, they said it was uncontrollable. Josh Verstappen has judged Red Bull's era of dominance to be over. 
suggesting the team should consider its priorities after what he feels has been wayward focus. The father of Max stated that whilst Red Bull will remain competitive, something needs to be done to solve its quickly diminishing gap to Ferrari and McLaren behind. He did not hold back in his criticism of Red Bull's recent performance. Verstappen could not resist turning his attention to his son's teammate Perez. The time when Red Bull had the dominant car really seems to be over now. Maybe they should concentrate a little bit more on racing and communicating with each other instead of other things. Red Bull needs to find out where this problem is coming from, because it is clear that teams like Ferrari and McLaren are getting closer. Max has still been able to mask that somewhat, but the big difference with Perez is becoming more and more obvious. There is no reason to believe Red Bull cannot bounce back. They are a strong team and have a wealth of experience. However, if tensions continue to rise, other sides keep improving, and both drivers do not equal performance, they will be at risk. For the Montreal Grand Prix, these curbs do not look any better for the Austrian racing stable. Like Monaco, the Montreal circuit has no high speed and a lot of curbs. As a result, the Red Bull cars may struggle again during the race. It's very much traction. Historically, it was there. But with the new surface, you don't know what the balance is going to swing to, says team boss Christian Horner. Whether Red Bull can perform better on Canadian soil remains to be seen. Perez is expected to be re-signed by Red Bull for 2025, potentially before the Canadian Grand Prix, despite his form dipping just as the team is under increasing pressure from Formula One rivals. Over the last three races, Perez's form has tailed off unexpectedly and severely. That this has coincided with Red Bull's toughest run of the season, and probably of this rule set since 2022, has to be factored in but Perez has clearly struggled to replicate Verstappen's ability to largely overcome challenging circumstances. It must be concerning for Perez to be struggling so much when previously street tracks have been his forte, and Red Bull's inherent weakness on these circuits has been what's allowed him to perform so well compared to Verstappen. It was two years ago that Perez won in Monaco, and he had a new two-year contract announced immediately afterwards. History may be repeating itself in terms of Monaco coinciding with Perez securing his Red Bull future, as the expectation among various parties is that Perez will be re-signed. It may be that a final contract has not yet been signed, but so sure are some in the paddock that Red Bull's mind has all but been made up, that plans are being made on the belief that Perez's Red Bull stay will be made official between now and the Canadian GP in two weekends' time. McLaren and Ferrari smell blood and are eager to knock Verstappen off the throne. But how nice would it be if we started seeing fierce battles every weekend? The sport and Verstappen need it. So, what are your thoughts for the rest of this season? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest F1 news.